Hello everyone and hello Amanda and I'm very pleased to have you with us today uh, for this interview uh, as part of the Grand Multiliteracy event and it's an event that's, uh, that aims to bring information and resources to multilingual families uh, and in terms of resources you do so much for multilingual families that I really wanted to have you as part of this event so I'm really happy that you accepted my invitation. Um, and just to introduce you to the people who don't know you yet, uh, so you're the founder of MissPandaChinese.com, you're the host of Playful Chinese uh, podcast, and the author of two bilingual books for children, and the Chinese language consultant for the Netflix show, uh, Word Party. And you're also uh, the mom of two multilingual children that are now close to being adults, so you have a lot of experience uh, and I really wanted to have you uh, and to to talk about what you do and about your children as well, how they grow up multilingual. Uh, is there anything you want to add to this short introduction? Wow, uh, thank you Yoshito for the introduction. Um, I really have nothing to add. I'm really grateful to be here and thank you for the invitation. And I'm Amanda, and many of my students call me Miss Panda. And uh, yeah, that's where uh, Miss Panda Chinese, uh, the name comes from. Uh, yeah. And uh, so, as I said, you do a lot for multiple families, uh, for the Chinese language, especially, and uh, children who are learning Chinese. What got you started with all of this? Wow. Um... It started in the 1990s <laughs> when I was an international student in um, uh, Austin, Texas. I had opportunity on the weekends to teach um, in the Austin Mandarin School. So it's every weekend, every Saturday. Okay. Um, that's where I encountered and also experienced firsthand the children who are learning Mandarin Chinese as a heritage language. Uh -huh. And that was an amazing experience because right there, I saw the efforts parents make to connect their kids with the, their heritage language, Mandarin Chinese, and how I see at that time the resistance children have when they go there in the classroom. Yeah. I was new, so I saw this. I was an ESL teacher when I was back in Taiwan, and okay. that was a lot of fun for me, had that experience. So when I went to college, I decided to make minor, take classes in bilingual education. Yeah. So when I went into that kind of situation, I realized that I have to do something with it so the kids can enjoy coming here every Saturday with their parents, especially if I learned from a parent, they drove over an hour every Saturday to make it to the Mandarin school to learn Mandarin. So that's how it all started. Okay. So all your the things about motivating children is before you, you yourself had your own children. It's when you were a teacher then. Yes. <laughs> so I work with children part-time as a college student back in Taiwan. And then okay. when I um, came to the States as an international student, and uh, I got an experience to work with um, students, uh, children who are learning Mandarin as a second language. And also at the same time, I was able to work with a, a bunch of my bilingual um, education association friends and to also in contact with children who are learning Spanish as a, a heritage language. So it was a really abundant um, kind of experience for me. So I never thought one day I have to teach my own kids Mandarin Chinese. <laughs> yes. And uh, so this leads me to another question about uh, the fact that we often hear, like when I speak to other children who grew up, or now they're adults, but who grew up bilingual and when they went to their Saturday school, etc., uh, it was like just, especially for Chinese characters, it's right, mm -hmm. right, right to memorize. Uh, and some parents I heard are very strict with, you need to speak just our home language to me and you can't speak the other language, etc. But you you go more for the motivation and you guide the, the children through everything you do, actually, like your, your lessons that you are doing, both your podcasts, your books. Uh, why do you think it's so important to 
motivate children rather than just impose uh okay you need to learn to read and write because it's on it's our language or you need to speak to me in that language sometimes without any reason <laughs> given but why why did you focus on motivating children from the start yeah it's such a good question um i feel parents just like teachers we are the first guide to our children we're yeah. the parents so we're also guiding them to explore the world and language is only a part of it and the most important thing for me is if they have curiosity they can keep it going i think that key is this word of curiosity and yeah. me as a parent as a guide as a, also my husband we are guiding them to enjoy this journey but if they don't have curiosity then it will be really hard and then children actually were natural born learners they are actually curious you know from birth because you can see that first they explore their their hands you know sucking their thumb and when they're toddlers they can be in front of the drawers for for hours just to open close open close until their hands get stuck in there and cry <laughs> or any little things so kids are very curious So with that said and with the experience I had with children when back in the um the Saturday schools I realized that it is really important for them to to like what they are learning. And then I think about my we can all reflect on our own experience of learning something. A lot of times we love something because there's somebody helping us to really get to know certain things so we want to always come back for more so that's always my goal i want the kids to come back for more i want my kids to come back to 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 speak with me but it's a journey so when you teach other kids you don't see them 24/7 but when you have our young kids it's 24/7 yeah. so we parents as a parents we also have anxieties because it is emotional labor what we were doing so make it fun make them feel interested and make them feel curious about um the language and the culture so that's why i want to do different things from different directions to make them feel like wow if i watch a video i have stories to listen to if i listen to something oh mom is singing a song and then the most important thing is i think they need also kids also need a community they want to feel that I, they are not the only ones speaking the target language with mm -hmm. me or with yeah. you what no it doesn't matter this is across languages it doesn't matter what language is i think kids also need to feel this is something they can be sh sharing with their friends so that's how i want to uh guide the kids to see there's possibility that their friends are also interested in um the language or get them interested or curious about it so yeah. motivation like you said it's like guiding them to be more curious and that's why i do what i do why i want to give them abundant of resources or places to find it's everywhere they can share or they can be proud of the language and the culture they know and and you really speak from experience and also i i know uh, that with your son especially it hasn't always been very easy uh would you like to share like how it was uh at the beginning uh, and also what you told me about last summer and like uh, I'll let you explain but <laughs> the famous story <laughs> um yeah I always like this uh, to 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 talk to tell this story about my son um when he was about six or seven seven years old second grade one day he came home and just told me out of out of just nowhere he just came home and he said hey mom I'm not going to speak uh, Mandarin to you anymore. I'm done. I was like, I know it's coming, but I don't know why suddenly just this happened. Yeah. So I said, "Oh." And then he said, "You know, nobody speaks Mandarin except you in school, everywhere. Oh, you're the only person. You know, um you speak Mandarin, but all the other people, they're all speak English. So I'm just going to speak English." Actually, I like his analysis. It's really really very good ob observation and it's true so i said okay and that's so what you said as well about motivation he had no motivation to 
or he, he didn't see the point of speaking Mandarin? Yeah, because he, he thinks the only person he needs to speak Mandarin is me. So, and, but other and he people... knows you speak English as well. Yes, he, he does. Yes, because my husband only speaks English. So when I speak with my husband at the time, you know, I, I was using English. Yeah. So so he just doesn't feel there is a need. And then he can get by with it. And then, by the way, outside of the house, nobody's going to, to speak Mandarin. I, I was like, okay. So, <laughs> so that becomes something very important trigger for me. And then I said, okay, so what do I do? Well, what do I do with this? So the, the, book, the best thing is that I usually have playtime at home we play all the time my daughter is two years younger so five years old at the time so we do like uh, all kinds of uh, intentional playing what's your intention that's a, a, a i want to ask so what's your intention of teaching your uh, children um their heritage language so for me intention is like, very important because i want them to understand this is a part of their heritage and this is a part of their culture and then they can communicate with with my mother who has very limited English um, proficiency. So speaking Chinese with her is so important because my mom cooks so well. My mom has a lot of fun things, you know, she can share with the kids. So I played with my kids every day, my daughter every day. And I say, okay, you can join us, you know, when you want to come to the playtime, Chinese playtime, and then you can join us. Oh, and then he, he was speaking English, and then we said, but this is Chinese playtime. We speak Chinese. <laughs> and then he just walked away. He decided, oh, no, it's okay. We just kept doing this every day. You know, one day we're throwing the marsh mar marshmallows, <laughs> you know, in the cups, you know, in the put Chinese words in the cups, and then, like, lay it up, and then throw the marshmallow into the cups. And then, you know, then if they throw it in, things like they can collect them. Ah, okay. I, so it's something fun. There's a little snack, and it's a kind of action-oriented kind of activity. It was about six, six, I guess several weeks later, he saw we were doing this, and he came and he said, can I play? So I look at him, I said, yeah, but this is a Mandarin playtime. Then he said, okay, okay, I'll speak Mandarin. <laughs> I'll play. Yeah. So, so that's motivation then. Yeah, motivation. It's it's so much fun. Every day he's seeing it, right? We're still doing it every day. But then another thing is that because of this situation, I decided to take Mandarin to my daughter's school yeah. from preschool and then took it to kindergarten, first grade, second grade. And then not just for her class, it's the whole grade, which means the whole kindergarten, almost 100 students. We're doing Mandarin with my daughter every week, not an after-school program. It's in curriculum program. I designed it. I talked to the principal. They loved it. And then we decided to give it a try. And then can you imagine when the whole grade, yeah. 100 students were all learning Mandarin with your mother and they were all having such a great time? The key is not to hey, remember all those words. The key is like, let's sing songs, have fun, and use these whenever you can. And the consequences so, that they learn at the same time. Yeah. Yes. And the kids saw me some days, you know, I'm only teaching one day a week at a school, but when I, but I have to pick up my kids every day. And um, so the kids would spot me on the campus. It would run to me. My, my, my daughter's friends would just run to me and say, Miss Panda! And they will hug me, you know, loving kids. And they will start to sing the Chinese songs they learned from me. <laughs> I just, I didn't tell them to sing any songs for me. Yeah, but they, they, they just, just want to, yeah. They want to. And, and that's, that's very fascinating to see that. And one day. I was waiting for my son. The kids were singing to me, and he was observing. They came to me, pull on my knee, sleep, mom, mom, mom. I said, huh? Yes. He said, tell them I'm your son. I speak Mandarin too. <laughs> yeah. It it's not a it's not something happened overnight. It yeah. took a long time. And I guess and even after it wasn't like all smooth sailing. It was like ups and downs and. Mm -hmm. And then you, you, you told me that now he's been living out of your house for two years. He's an adult now. Um, and, but, but you told me that he's taking care of his Mandarin. He wants to keep it up. And what, what, what does he do? 
we call he calls me we talk to each other every week and whenever I talk with him it's always in Mandarin if I you know suddenly if I speak English to him he'll turn around and say mom mom Mandarin why are you speaking English so he this is his second year he just his started his second year in college so he was away the whole year last year so whenever he came home uh during holidays and he will make sure he he speaks Mandarin or he listens to me and that he wants me to fully 100% uh, speak Mandarin. So he That's has great. taken over the journey. Yeah. Yeah. And, and he's now responsible. He's taking the responsibility to to keep up his languages. Yes. Even though he joined, a, a very funny, he joined the um, student association uh, when he first got to college last year. And then he told me that, hey, mom, I joined a, a, a a, a kind of like a club i said oh what club because they had a club day and then he said oh i joined a um korean american <laughs> club ah, okay. and then i said oh very interesting i said what happened he said well they were talking with me and they said oh you should join our club and uh, he said you know um yeah but i joined the um, chinese and taiwanese student association but they said but it's okay but we have um events we have food and he kept, he said, I just kept walking. And this guy just ran after him. And we also have fried rice. He said, okay, I'm signing up. <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. Connections, right? Connections, yeah. talking about connections. Yeah, so it's really, really fun. And we thought it was really cute you know, to, to hear that. But I think <laughs> a lot of cultures have a lot of cross over yeah. and then very similar things. And then that's also... He, he knows we, we've been to, we go to a Korean um, supermarket, Japanese supermarket. We used to live in Hawaii. So the Asian cultures are very close, you know, in a way, even though there are uh, differences. But it's really a lot of fun. So when he said that story, we thought it was really cute. But yes, he has taken his Chinese journey, the culture, the language in his own hands. Yeah. So nice to, to hear and to, to witness and so now I would like to to talk about your books that we can see in the background. Uh, yes. So you wrote these two books. Uh, can we talk about first Mandarin Sounds and what? So what is it first for the people who don't know? Uh, so who it is for and what what it, it allows you to do, uh, and why you got to write this book. Yes. Maybe I should take the books out to show you. Um. Let's see. So um, for uh, First Mandarin Sound, this book is the book of first Chinese words. And the, the interesting thing, I wrote this book actually for my niece. She was very young and she's, she's now three years old. So um, I wrote this book because I think it'll be kind of fun for her to learn Mandarin in a very playful way. And yeah. then also for a lot of families who want to introduce Mandarin Chinese to their children. Doesn't matter if it's a heritage language or they just want to expose kids to the man, the Chinese language. So this is uh, a book I wrote for families with young children. I would say two years and up, you know, um, enjoy that. And then even for older kids as a way to learn pinyin, that's a romanization of Mandarin Chinese. So, um, the design of this book is very spacious, does not have very crowded uh, wording. So every, you can see the page for here, this is the sound, but, and then there's a representation of a phrase, baba, which means dad, and use the sound, ba. Okay, so here you can actually look for, can yes. you see the sound? Go find the sound, ba. You have to find, look at the picture and find it. And here, you look at the ba again, but the most important thing is how to say dad. Ba ba. Then look for the Chinese characters. Can you see it? Ba ba, ba ba, ba ba. So the Chinese characters are hidden in the picture. Yeah. So the idea is to make it interactive. Interactive yeah. for kids. You know, you don't need to learn the pinyin, but at least you know. But or you can read the, the word, but look for the words. So yeah. after a few pages, the funny thing is, 
kids will start to see that I know Chinese. Meow, bird. Oh, how do you do? You see those words? Yes. So you have this one here. Then can you find them on this page? Yeah. Meow, 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 and that's a bird. So yeah. suddenly, learning to read Chinese characters are actually something fun. They have a picture, and they can look for the words, and because the words are on the picture. And then for parents, actually, who、um, needs a little bit assistant or readers, so basically they're a glossary for them. So the words, all the words in Pinyin and in the Chinese characters, and that also include phrases you can use.、Uh -huh. Oh. Yeah, in the same in Mandarin, so you can use that. No matter the grandparents can read to the kids, and then the caregivers can read to the kids. Parents can read to the kids, and kids after a while they can read on their own. I have a video on Instagram showing some of、um, uh, my my actually my my、um, niece、uh, pointing all the words and then going to the pages. They say she's so young; she's actually not reading, but for her, she recognizes all the. All the、yeah. pictures, and she knows how to match the image with the spoken words. But at the same time, she is looking at the written characters、yeah. of Mandarin. So unconsciously, she's starting to recognize them. Yeah. Yes. Yes. So that's for the Mandarin sounds. It's a first Chinese word book for、um, young children or children beginners, and you know people who want to introduce Mandarin to a、uh, kids. Yeah. And you, you、uh, mentioned about、uh, little bun. Little、yeah. bun is about、um, emotions. Yeah. How do you feel when you teach your kids their heritage language, Yoshito? Uh. On a day-to-day -day、oh, basis, now how do you how feel? Do I feel? Mm-hmm. Oh, I, now, I've never thought about this, but <laughs> I guess. I like, Yeah, I guess it depends on how they respond as well.、Uh -huh. So when they are excited, I get more excited because they、uh. they like what we're doing.、Uh, but there's sometimes where they prefer to do something else.、Uh, so maybe there's a bit of disappointment at that at that time.、Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it, it depends. I guess there are lots of different feelings. Yes. So the the story behind this book, Little Bun. A bilingual storybook about feelings is、yeah. actually about our family journey raising bilingual children, and、uh, this book is co-authored with my daughter. Yeah,、and、that's very special. Is, and she is the illustrator. All the little buns you see, she illustrated them. Yeah,、uh, we did this way before COVID. Um, but they took a long time, right? It's a journey, as I said. Yeah. So、uh, we finally published it last year. So the reason why I ask you this question is, how do you feel when you、um, guide your children to learn their heritage language, like Japanese, Korean?、Um, how do you feel? So、um, this is actually the emotions we experience every day as we help our kids to learn their a new language. So、yeah. if it is happy, okay, and then is it happy, or maybe that day they are not so happy. Yeah. Or, or like you said, maybe that day they are doing something you guide them to do, and they are really happy about it. Then you are very excited, and they are very excited. So, so this book is dedicated to parents and children. Any day、It、doesn't need to be you know learning anything, but I think for us. Very important thing is we want to always know the emotions we have, not just our children, but mom and dad, because it's a lot of work. I would call it, this is emotional labor because、yeah. you love it so much, you really want to give it to them, but sometimes the response is probably not what you are expected. Yeah. So, but if we can talk about it. Even for the kids, how do you feel today? They can come to the book and tell you how they feel, and then I think that you know, you know, the mood they have. Are they angry? Yeah. Okay. Or my <laughs> my, I have to take take you to see this. Or my little niece, why is little little bun crying? Sad. Yeah. 
So I think we need to observe that, not just for the kids, but for ourselves, so we can gain encouragement and inside and to talk about feelings. Because I think when they tell you, I think we can understand more how to guide them. Yeah. Like this. Just because of this, like my, I realized my son at one point, he, he, he was really into Minecraft. He wow. really loved some games. So I decided I need to learn how to play that game so I can talk with them. We can communicate in the same level. So at the time, the story, I, 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 I told him at night, the bedtime conversation would be, yeah, let's talk about, I don't know how to do this Minecraft thing. This, this thing you, you, you told me, it seems like I couldn't go through. I cannot dig the, the, the diamond or the rock. Oh, then he was so excited. Then the conversation, I can guide the conversation, but it's in Mandarin. So yeah. he's learning that with me. I'm learning from him. So it's mutual. So this is this book, Little Bun, a bilingual storybook about feelings. I think every day we think through a lot of feelings. I hope this book can help parents who are raising multilingual children if yeah. Mandarin is a part of the, the language. And I hope this book can help you. Even if it, is, if it is not, it can be something you can use. It can translate into different languages and see yeah. how everybody feels that day, that moment. Yeah. And so you said that this book is something you co-authored with your daughter and she illustrated it. Mm -hmm. um, and I always feel like when we have these projects together with our children, uh, it, it creates more bonds. And I was wondering if it, it had an effect on her view of her roots, uh, so Taiwanese and Chinese roots, uh, or in the way she speaks, did she speak? Did she choose to speak more Mandarin or, or not? Or what was the effect? Wow, that's a very uh, good question. For my kids, uh, I think right now they know the language to speak with me is Mandarin. Yeah. They, I would say 99% of the time they speak Mandarin with me. The 1%, this is very important. They have things they don't know how to say it. Yeah. Because we have gone through... We are not in a kitchen uh, conversation stage, kitchen, like what to eat and things like that, because sometimes yeah, we yeah. talk more complicated things. So there are things they don't know. So they will use um, English and they will even ask me, oh, how do you say this in, in Mandarin? Or I heard this. Uh, is, what does this mean? Yes. So the bonding is very important. There's one very important quote from a child psychologist. Uh, psychologist, I, um, James uh, Comer said, there's no significant learning without significant relationship. Yeah. So when you have a great relationship bonding and they will be learning. So even from our own parents, if you think about that, our relationship with the parents and impact the way how we learn from them. Um, and also why sometimes you hear children have their favorite teacher and then because they have a favorite math teacher, so they really want to do so well in math, or they have a, a favorite teacher in, in, for example, English for me. And I would say, oh, I really want to do well in English. So this bonding, this relationship is so important. And yes, as we um, were working on this uh, Little Bond book project, every night we talk about um, what should we include, what emotions, you know, are most talk about. How do we feel when when she felt frustrated, you know, when we were doing something she didn't like or something she really liked or our trips to Taiwan, what does she like and how does she feel? So, so many little things. And that is the purpose of this project is being together, yeah. do things together. And the most important thing is create memories together. That's a very important and, message for everyone watching as well. But like to, to create this bond with our children through what they they are interested in, what they like, and yeah. Yeah. And so, uh, so you, you said that you now your children speak with you 99% of the time in uh, Chinese. Uh, and what about, so because it's uh, this event is about multilingual literacy, I was wondering about their journey with reading and writing. Mm. And so did, did you teach them or did they go to a school or 
or how how was it yes um so at one point i was thinking about sending them to a uh, mandarin school and so we uh, i set up the tours and then we visited um three different uh, mandarin schools and not just a visit i literally request the school to let them sit in a class for a full class or half a class or 15 20 minutes mm-hmm. and um and then they <laughs> and i said we finished the tour and i we have a conversation with them they were very young they were like elementary school uh, age and then i said okay so you need to decide do you want to go to school one school two school three or you want to stay with mommy school <laughs> so that is my school or my playtime and uh the funny thing is they both decided no we're just going to stay with you we we will we will try to work with you so um so that's why i create a lot of resources for them so um they are my guinea pigs to try a lot of <laughs> different things and then I publish them uh, on my blog, Miss Panda Chinese, to share with other parents and teachers and to make things more interesting. And then also to have a community for myself, more for myself, because um, at the time I uh, moved a lot. So I was not in the States, I was in different countries. So having a consistent community was very hard, but I found having a blog helped me to connect with a lot of people around the world. So yeah. um, that's where it all started. And reading, that's why I do storytelling. Um, I do a lot of storybooks online, and then I tell stories in Mandarin um, or bilingual. Usually it's bilingual because I want people can connect just so not with one language because they also have the community language i think these two can um can grow together not just only one because the kids will feel they cannot connect with their friends and why yeah. bilingual books because a bilingual books is a way to they can share with their friends even though they can read in mandarin but they can also read in english but for yeah. most of their friends they probably cannot read the target language so if it's it's bilingual they can share they can talk about it so there's a connection there. So yeah. that's very important. And um, it's just like some books, there are no words, wordless yeah. uh, books. And they're also very good because yeah. everybody can talk about in different languages. Yeah. So bilingual books inspires curiosity for their friends. Bilingual stories creates a connection from one to another. And then... Uh, also, it's a way to com- create a community to let kids know that there are different things outside for their friends. But for them, they feel like, wow, I can teach my friends how to say a few words in, in these bilingual books. So it's a way, I, yeah, it's a way for, for children to, to show other, other friends what they like as well. And yeah. Yes. And then I think the most important thing is. We need to build the power of liking it, liking yeah. the heritage language or the world language. We need to first build the power of liking and yeah. then to strengthen, strengthen the power of liking, make it to be the power of loving it and to the power of wanting to learn more. It yeah. all starts from the beginning, curiosity. It's all linked together. Yeah. Okay, I, I was going to, to ask you what would be your, like, if you had one advice to give to parents uh, to help their children to read and write in their home languages, mm-hmm. what would it would be? But I guess it, it would be <laughs> to... Reading. A lot of a lot of listening. A lot of listening at the beginning. You tell them stories. You do a lot of things together. You just talk. If yeah. this is your native language, you just speak that language. I know there are a lot of uh, activities and games and things like that on devices now. But yeah. I feel personally what I have observed, what I have experienced and what I have seen the most effective way is to spend time with your kids outside of the house, yeah. doing outdoor activities, biking, go find the rocks, go look at animals, camping, anything. Yeah, and I feel a like, long time. 
it's important. When we do something a bit special from time to time, like you said, camping or finding rocks, etc., even if it's it's not far away from home, like yeah. it, it, as long as it change, it changes. It can bring more vocabulary, and they want to talk about it more. Yeah. So. Yeah. And also reading, right? Because reading yeah. will help them to gain different vocabulary because every story is different. So yeah. the more they read, they're expanding their vocabulary. Yeah. And then it's a way to learn about different things. They like dinosaurs. Oh, let's read dinosaur books. Oh, if they like airplanes, let's read the airplane books. If they like cooking, let's read a cooking, different kind of cooking stories. And that brings in the vocabulary. Yeah. That is much more interesting. And then do it, not just read it. They, they really make it. Yeah. <laughs> Look, I don't, it can be paper airplane, you know, can be, you know, drawing the dinosaurs and go look at the dinosaurs in the museums or even checking it online or cooking a meal. That is, you combine all the five senses with what they have heard and use the words that you want to deliver with them, connect them in a very strong way. That is the most important thing. You have to know how to listen, then they yeah. can speak. I always say that babies take the whole year to produce the first word. And we as parents are so excited. The whole family would call grandma, grandma. Oh, you know, baby said this is the first word. But when we're passing down the heritage language, we're so anxious. We want them to learn and want them to say it right away. Yeah. Slow down. We need to give them a little bit of time because they need time to listen, listen, listen. And then they feel comfortable to show you what they know. Reading yeah. is also input. The more you read to them, the more you read to them, the more they recognize words and more see the words coming out. Then one day they'll say, I can read this on my own. Even probably not every words, but yeah. they are, they want to do that. Yeah. So that's the research from Dr. Steve Creshen about the comprehension input. And I, I truly love it and I highly recommend it. Because that's the most important thing. You need to listen, understand, comprehend first, then you speak. You need yeah. to read, understand, and see it over and over again. Read it over and over again. Not too difficult, but at their level, a little bit higher. Then they can read it on their own. And then they can write. My yeah. daughter writes me text messages in Mandarin Chinese. I want to let you know that. <laughs> wow. Yeah. But you know? I told her, it's okay. Use the dictation. And the funny thing is, I hardly see any mistakes because she knows the words so she can correct them. Ah, that's good, yeah. So technology can be very helpful as well. Yeah. Right? We used to type stories. First, write a little bit, a little square, kind of like a comic thing. You know, what's this? You know, write a little thing, maybe just one sentence. Then later yeah. on, we do four squares, two squares, and three squares, and four squares. And then later on, I say, okay, I teach you how to type on, in pinyin because that's the input we mostly see in the state. So we learned how to do that. And then now she would text me in Mandarin, in, in Chinese. Yeah, And I say, it's okay, step use technology. Step. Yeah, yeah, it's a step-by-step -step kind of a, a, a progress. Okay, so thank you very much for your time. Uh, and is there anything else you would like to share with the families uh, that we haven't covered? Well, I think the most important thing is I'm so happy you're here because bilingual parenting is hard because you care, because you're a good <laughs> parent, because yeah. you care and you love your kids and because you want to pass it all on to them. But I think we need to have empathy for our kids. Because of what's important to us, we need to show them it can be important for them as well. But because they are so young, they don't have the life experience yet. So yeah. we can guide them to see that with playing, with fun, with the power of the language to communicate with people, even just to use that to get a piece of candy or to talk with grandma and grandpa or aunties, uncles or friends. And the most important thing is consistency we need daily consistency not occasional intensity because yeah. that's how we put all the little pieces together and grow 
a beautiful tree of bilingual families. Thank you very much for this lovely message at the end, very important message, and for sharing all your, your experience and how it was with, and your, your resources as well. Um, and so if people want to find you online, uh, where should they go? Okay, um, my blog is, uh, my website is misspandachinese.com. And then my podcast is Playful Chinese. And it's on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, any major, all the major um, uh, podcasting platforms. And also my books, uh, First Mandarin Sounds and also Little Bun. They are available online on Amazon and then uh, bookstores, online bookstores as well. Um, YouTube channel, also Miss Standard Chinese. And I'm looking forward to hearing from you. If you have any questions, if things I can help you with, drop me an email. Yeah, it's, um, it's a, there's a contact form on uh, misspandachinese.com. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, thank you so, so much.